125 years and 125,000 square feet of new space for the Crocker. This is a big deal for Sacramento, a big deal. It is a gift to all the people of the region and most especially to the people of Sacramento. This now gives a tangible, physical presence in a way that hasn't existed before to that arts community. I just think it's going to be overall just amazing um, for the whole art scene and the people of Sacramento. It actually gives the whole entire region a focal point to actually have engaging dialogue around art. We will bring the art of the world to Sacramento and its citizens, and this museum will be for everyone. It kind of blows you away a little, you know, when you see it, when you get inside of it. Everybody that comes into the building has said, oh my gosh, this isn't just going to change the Crocker, this is going to change Sacramento, or it's going to change Northern California. The Crocker has long been the major uh, uh, art museum in this part of uh, Northern California, but if you can double, triple the space, just imagine. I think that for me the origins of becoming involved with the Crocker were probably a feeling that Sacramento deserved excellence in the field of visual arts. Although we love the Crocker for the containment of the original ideas of the Crocker family, the original building which was built in the late 1800s just didn't have the facilities that are expected by the public when they go to art museums. We had no loading docks. We had no cafe. It, it was just too small. Our temperature, humidity controls, all those sorts of things were considered not quite up to you know, standard, and so it made it hard to get some of the highest value shows. We had no dedicated program space. You know, museums are first and foremost educational institutions, and without any program space, uh, it's rather problematic to try to serve a broad public. That sense of, it's not all it could be, it's not all it should be, that's what began to drive this desire to see something better. Marcy told me of a vision that she had for expanding the Crocker into something that was going to be really quite magnificent in terms of its architecture. What we really needed to get in place was a visionary director. I was brought to Sacramento, in fact, to expand the museum and to make it more relevant to the community. And the board's desire was for the museum, as we were entering the 21st century, to become a modern institution. I was amazed that anyone would want to take this job on because it was fraught with a lot of difficulties at that time. People needed convincing. They thought it sounded good. You know, they thought, well, Marcy thinks it's going to happen, but, you know, we need money and we need the city to buy in and we need the public to buy in. Here we are, uh, right here in Sacramento, where nobody has raised this kind of money before. But it, it was such an important project for us, and we knew that if we didn't do it now and didn't do it right, it may never get done. The Crocker Art Museum Capital Campaign is the largest arts initiative or capital campaign in this region. It's amazing how the city of Sacramento and this region and beyond have responded to our request for funding. We had raised, before our capital campaign even began, over $15 million from three or four donors. I can remember uh, the first meeting we had in the building uh, when it was still somewhat a shell, but we brought in a number of major donors, and, and one of the donors said, you know, when I gave to this campaign, and, and they gave a very significant uh, cash gift, one of the largest ones Sacramento had seen to that point. And they said, 
when I gave this gift, I really didn't believe that the museum would ever get built. I just thought it was important to try. There were times where we all sort of looked at each other and said, can we, can we do this? And we, we honestly believed we could. Matisse probably said it best, creativity takes courage. And I think many people in Sacramento have had the courage to step up and put their money where their mouth is to make this a reality. We sent out an RFQ to architects, every major museum architect in the world. We selected Guathami, Siegel & Associates to create a master plan for us, which took into consideration all of the needs that the museum had with regards to space, with regards to programming, and all of, the, all of those issues that would determine what the ultimate square footage was. You can't just build a building and expect a museum to move into it. You really need to be much more organic in the process. See what an institution needs, see what their collection requires, see what the community is interested in. I had no doubt that we'd selected the right architect because he was the only one that said, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to build for you, but I'm going to see what your challenges are and your problems and I'm going to try to solve them. There are design challenges with any facility. Uh, some of the ones here, you know, attaching to an historic building is not an easy thing to do. We felt that it was important that we don't lose the identity of the original Crocker Art Museum, and we wanted something that would be a interesting juxtaposition to the old building, and yet we wanted something new, but we wanted something connected. We were building a 125,000 square foot addition to a 45,000 square foot existing facility, three times the size, we didn't want to overwhelm it. And so we very carefully tried to relate the datums and the horizontal lines of the new building to the existing conditions so that you could literally see cues taken from the existing building. The colors of the new building are basically a symphony of whites and grays and a fairly neutral palette in and out from a medium gray and so is the existing building. We use the three basic building materials in the new building, which are a white metal panel, a pre-weathered zinc uh, shingle, and glass in multiple combinations to create a midi urban uh, complex of buildings. We did not graft the building onto the existing building. We built a building that was separate and distinct, though linked, and we think in the end that our contemporary building enhances the existing neoclassical building. And when you're in the new building, you get all kinds of sight lines to where you can look over and see the old uh, museum. They have a balcony on the new museum. They're both three floors. There's a nice uh, chiming, I think, that's going on there. What we have is a quintessential Guathmi Siegel building. Anybody that knows their architecture and drives by this structure will know it's one of their buildings. I would say I'm enamored of the architecture. I had no idea when Charles Guathmi was chosen that I would fall so in love with the shapes, and the forms, and the volumes that he ended up creating. But our sorrow is that Charles passed away last winter and we all wish that he would he be would here. He would be here to see it. Rudolph and Slatton started construction back in June of 2007. The groundbreaking was in April. Charles Guathme himself was, was here on site, and I know that was some excitement for our crew because there had been a lot of anticipation uh, of doing such a signature world-class project designed by Charles Guathme. I finally walked up to him and said, Hi, I'm John Holm. I'm going to be building your building for you. The Crocker Art Museum expansion project, in our estimation, employed well over 5,000 different individuals over the course of the project. We poured upwards of 15,000 cubic yards of concrete. The structural steel package itself is uh, more than 1,400 tons of steel. We're super close to sea level and only a couple feet really above the river. In fact, we are below the river in flood stage. That really did affect the design in a very direct way. We did not want to build a basement area, but we also didn't want to put the storage collection in a basement or even at grade. We chose to put the main art storage areas on the second level. And the heart of the art collection is on the third floor and second floor. 
And this is basically like the living room of the new museum. The idea about this space is that from the ends of the room, activities that are within, uh, within this room can spill out into that piazza. You can see that this window wall literally is non-bearing. There's no columns that support the galleries which are immediately above us. So if you're gonna do that kind of picture frame with no columns, you've gotta build a gigantic steel truss. So up above that window section in those white panels is a 60,000 pound steel truss. Again, all to create this beautiful vista view of the old building. We're right adjacent to the, an, a major interstate highway. So we had the acoustical issues to deal with, uh, all of that vehicular noise. So we uh, doubly and triply insulated certain windows in this courtyard, which is exposed to the ambient noise of the area. We built a waterfall that helps create some white sound. I love the auditorium myself. It was a very challenging space. The floor to floor is about 14 feet. That's pretty low to, to develop a, an auditorium. It involved, as a result, however, a tremendous amount of coordination, almost like residential detailing. It was very intense. My first favorite space is the Weeboard Gallery, which is an adjunct space to the big changing exhibition space. It's just a beautiful space. It's all windows. And you look out the windows, and, and you see the park. You see the old building. One of my favorite spaces, in addition to the auditorium down below, is this Sawtooth Skylight Gallery, and there are three of them that are parallel to each other, but they're really wonderful because of the way that they introduce natural light and the sense of the outdoor within a very tall gallery space. My other favorite space is the freight elevator, which sounds silly, but we've never had one. And it's so big, and we can put 12,000 pounds of art in it, and if I could name one space after me in the building, it would be that freight elevator. There's a ceremony called the Topping Off Ceremony, and it's the setting of the last piece of structural steel on the project. And we take that last piece of steel, paint it white, and get a lot of marking pens. So it's signed by literally hundreds of people. Uh, correction, we are dehumidifying now. <laughs> we were able to work on this building on paper for about five years. And because of the amount of time um, and the thought that went into the process, I, I think we've got one of the best museum buildings in America. We'll be able to, through this facility, showcase a lot more of our collections. Many things that we've had um, have been in storage. Actually, we've had less than 4% of our collection on view. And this gets us up to a much healthier ratio of about 20%. We have a lot of work to do and just better understanding what we have. Works have been packed up for so long we haven't seen them before. We're pulling a huge percentage um, of works, uh, hanging them for the first time when this building opens. We've added new collection areas such as oceanic and African art. We're able to showcase areas that previously haven't been seen, such as an entire wing dedicated to Asian art. They have fallen heir to a fantastic collection of world ceramics. I hear there's another fantastic show coming from the East, and uh, I'm just so pleased. One of the things that we want to do is really tell the story of California art from statehood to the present day as well as possible. Maybe the best part of this story is not just the building and the capital campaign, but the collections building and how generous people in this region and elsewhere around the country have been to making sure that the Crocker's collection really can tell that story well. I hope that donors in this area who may have bought a Bruce Nauman when Nauman was at UC Davis, you know, 11 miles away, I hope that that might end up in the Crocker someday and this space is the perfect place to put it. So this is where the, the bar's California Impressionist collection will go. It's kind of a collection that will span from 1900 to 1920. Because of what you're doing, we're going to get a very major Alson Clark, which is a really beautiful painting. Oh, that sounds sad. Well, we both are collectors. Uh, Ted collects microfossils, or he did many years ago, but um, uh, we've long been collectors. The exhibition, uh, Artists at Continents, 
and uh, curated by Scott, gave us an, you might say, an appetite for California paintings. <laughs> we put together a proposal uh, for the uh, Crocker Art Museum. We would put together a collection of California Impressionists if the museum would provide the space in the new expansion. And this was warmly received, and uh, so we began this project. We have uh, uh, perhaps over 20 paintings at the moment, and we'll have more by the time of the opening. Touring exhibitions sometimes bypass Sacramento because people in the outside world don't think there's any place to show them. And I think that it's going to allow us to get shows that we've never been able to take before. Bringing in stuff that's much less accessible that people can, um, well, struggle with more uh, is uh, mind expanding. It's good for us. For artists especially, they're going to be able to see things that I hope will inspire them, um, will broaden them, will also showcase their work. I think it will be incredibly effective to, for the teachers of this region uh, at the universities, the high schools, the grade schools. It's one thing to read about art, to see projected images of art. It's another thing to actually look at the art. Be very carefully, very gently. Let's we'll just... be able to show much bigger objects than we used to show. We'll have a 30 foot long painting by Jennifer Bartlett on this main level. We have a Luis Jimenez uh, sculpture which is as large as life, a horse with a cow, and it's a rider and he's lassoing the cow and it's sort of in boat color paint with glitter and red eyes and people are gonna love it. We'll also be able to showcase our master drawings collection, which has been shown around the world in past decades, but rarely seen here in Sacramento. So we'll be able to pull out our Jacques-Louis Davids and our Rembrandts and our Durs and, and things that people know we have but they just haven't been able to see. Last time I was down, which was like two, three weeks ago, I actually left the museum with tears because it was so beautiful and so overwhelming to see all the art that's been stashed all over Sacramento now on the walls. It's been very exciting to be here at this particular moment in time and to have the opportunity to have this new building and to at the same time have the opportunity to build the collections. Time doesn't permit showing each of the art objects in this motion picture. That will be an experience when you visit the Crocker Art Gallery and it will be one not soon forgotten. Maybe one of the reasons why as an elected official I'm talking about art all the time and its importance is because growing up, I grew up in a poor community, Oak Park in Sacramento. We never got to go to the Crocker Art Museum. So we might drive by this big Victorian house and not know what, it, what was inside and didn't get a chance to go in. That's why I'm so excited that one of the things that the Crocker is doing, not only expanding um, you know, its building, which will be amazing in of itself, but its educational programs that are going to make sure that kids in underserved communities like the ones that I grew up will have access to the arts. The expansion will actually have an education center which will house a variety of areas for people to really engage with art. So it will have four studio classes, it will have an interactive art gallery that people can play a role in co-creating an art experience, and it also will have an education resource center for our docents and for our teachers. The docents are the public face of the museum. They connect the public to the art. They provide hundreds of hours of volunteer work every year. They're very well trained in different strategies to connect children to the art, to connect adults to the art. Right now, because the museum is closed, we're not touring, so we're doing a tremendous amount of education. We have a lot of collections that docents have never seen. People are dedicated to being prepared for the first day we're open.
wonderful day. And I'm with Joyce. I could burst into tears. I was here Friday night balling like a baby, so very proud to be here today. It's like going up into the attic of Sacramento and suddenly pulling down a bunch of pieces that you know, we haven't been able to see. So that's the fun part. Just remembering spending weeks on just all this uh, curvature out here with all the iron that was going up. And not only uh, looking at the art that they have, but thinking that it is a piece of art. I think the president of the gallery had said that this was mind-blowing, and it really is. It's, uh, it really surpasses our expectations. It's we were going amazing. to contact the management to see if they're going to rent out a room to us. So <laughs> we'd like to actually move in here, so that would be nice. It's when this building opens to the public that all of the work begins. Because museums aren't about just collections and buildings, they're really about community. They're about education, they're about engagement. The power of the it's not just the visual art, it's what kind of impact we can have on other people's lives, in, in, in particular, I think, young people. The things that the museum will afford to happen that people can engage in the benefits of those kinds of discussions make your life better on a daily basis, not just the one day you're in the museum, but reveal things that you needed to know always, that you wanted to know always. What will be really important for the Crocker is to be um, a center of culture for the Sacramento region and not just art museum, not just gallery experiences, but all sorts of different kind of experiences. To really have the Crocker be a gathering place, a place where people meet one another, a place where people um, create a new community.